Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School. Here for Teaching in Room 9, all my lessons focus on math for second graders. Welcome back friends, I'm so glad that you're able to join me here today and I can't wait to jump right in and do some learning here together. But before we get started, we're gonna do some mindful breathing together. All right, so I'd like you to sit up nice and straight and tall, really opening up those airways, loosen your shoulders or any tension you might be having in your neck. We're gonna take some deep breaths here together. As you breathe in, count to three, and as you breathe out, count to three. And then as we kind of go through some of these deep breathing um, exercises together, I'm going to talk to you more about our zones of regulation or our engine checks. So we're gonna talk about the yellow zone today and ways that we can help to recenter and focus our body when we start to feel like we are in that yellow zone. All right, take a deep breath in through your nose. Out through your mouth. in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in and out. Great. Nice job, friends. Keep taking those deep breaths in and out in and out and i'm going to talk to you about that yellow zone so when we feel we already talked about our blue zone this is when we feel a little bit maybe sad down in the dumps kind of tired or bored and then we talked about that green zone that's where we like to be and that is when we're focused calm ready to roll and um, ready to learn that day then when you're starting to feel a little yellow this might look like feeling frustrated Maybe you're feeling a little bit worried. Maybe you're starting to feel a little more high energy and you're starting to feel really silly. Uh, this might also look like feeling anxious, excited, or maybe even a little bit embarrassed. So we kind of think of our engine checks as kind of um, like a, th a speedometer going up and down and starting on the blue, feeling really low, green, so yellow is where we're starting to feel a little bit more elevated. Um, so some ways that we can help to regulate our body and our minds is, and this is unfortunately something that's a little bit trickier right now with everything going on, but you're always welcome to ask for a hug. If you are in school right now, unfortunately that's probably not a choice for you, but if you were learning at home, you can always ask your parents or maybe even a sibling for a hug if um, you're feeling like you might need it in that moment. Or if you'd like to, you can give a big hug to a stuffy or a pillow. That might help you to feel a little bit more relaxed and focused. Uh, something else you can do is listen. You can listen to music. A lot of the times I like to play really calming, relaxing music during the day because it really just helps to kind of transport your mind kind of to a faraway place where you can leave any of those uh, thoughts behind you and really just kind of focus on being in the moment and taking these deep breaths. Uh, something else that you can do when you're starting to feel kind of yellow is write or draw. So whenever I have a calm down kit in my classroom, I always include a little notebook with crayons and pencils for my friends to maybe write about how they're feeling and just get those thoughts out on paper. And that helps to make us feel a little bit more uh, recentered and ready to go. This is the great one. You may go on a quick little walk. Sometimes I'll take a friend in my um, classroom just on like a quick walk, just to kind of get you out of that space when you're starting to feel a little bit yellow. And it helps to kind of clear your mind and recenter so that when you come back to your learning space, you're feeling ready to go. Um, or if you're at home, you can just maybe, if you're in your room or you're um, learning in a specific spot in your house, maybe take a quick uh, walk around your house or maybe even outside your house just to change up that scenery and help you to kind of let go of those thoughts or feelings and just kind of take a quick little break. Um, we talked about squeezing things. So squeezing Play-Doh or squeezing like a squishy ball is a 
right thing to do when you're starting to feel in that yellow zone. And um, the last two that I'm gonna talk about are doing jumping jacks, which if you're feeling really high energy, sometimes moving, jumping, jumping jacks, uh, running in place, pushing on a wall, all these things can help you to kind of get out those wiggles and feel ready to roll. And then um, reading is another really great thing to do when you're starting to feel yellow or maybe you're feeling a little bit in the blue zone that day. Reading helps to take your mind off of whatever is going on and focus on the story. And then you can kind of jump right into that story with those settings and characters and kind of takes you outside of the um, the space that you're already in. And that way it helps you to feel a little bit more regulated. All right, friends, I hope that you were able to take some of those deep breaths and listening to all these strategies maybe will be helpful for you as we're kind of all navigating this kind of tricky time where sometimes um, our feelings or our thoughts might be a little bit bigger than they are um, during a typical school year. So I'm gonna jump right in to our uh, learning objectives or goals for our lessons this week. I can understand place value of three digit numbers. So again, this carried over from last week. Uh, we were working on subitizing and recognizing uh, groups of items without having to count. And then that kind of took us into three digit numbers. We worked on building them and understanding that three digit numbers are broken down into hundreds, tens, and ones. And we worked on building those. And then we're kind of um, building on top of that this week. And it says, I can compare two three-digit numbers using greater than, less than, or equal to. So we're kind of working on building those three-digit numbers still. Um, but now that we've gotten a little bit more comfortable um, working and manipulating with those three-digit numbers, we're able to take two three-digit numbers, break it down into all these different ways that we are representing numbers, and um, comparing the two and using symbols like less than, greater than, or equal to. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my friends this way so you guys can see my comparing numbers chart. And this is just kind of the process that we use in order for us to compare to three digit numbers. So it says here, comparing numbers. Looks like a crooked L. All right, you guys ready to repeat after me? Okay. Left is less than. Nice. Then we have this symbol in the center, which I know you guys recognize. This is our equal sign. Equal means just the same. Nice job. And then this one here is right is greater than. So if our little arrow in our corner here is pointing to the right side, then that means it is greater than. So again, our like sort of squished L, our crooked L is uh, left and less than equal means just the same and right is greater than. And when we are comparing three digit numbers, if we are just going to look at the numbers, because um, after this we're gonna look at the um, using base 10 blocks in order for us to compare three digit numbers. But if we are just looking at the numbers, we're always gonna follow these three steps. So, ready? First things first, start in the largest place. Okay, so when we're looking at two three digit numbers, like these numbers written out here, you're gonna start in that largest place. And what place is that? Is that the hundreds, the tens, or the ones? Nice, if you said hundreds, you got it. Our hundreds place in our three digit number, that is always gonna be our largest place. So we're gonna start all the way in that farthest number to the left. And we'll look at those two. But what I'm seeing here is eight and eight are the same number. So you have 800 and 800. So then we have to come to the second step. Ready? Second step. If the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So then like in this top one here, we saw that that largest place, those numbers were the same. Those digits were the same. So we had to, because they were equal, we went to the next place which is our tens. So if you have a four in the tens place, then we know it is broken down into 10, 20, 30, 40, which you can see those tens drawn out right underneath there as well. And then on this side, we saw that the six digit was in the tens place. And you can see our six tens are right here. So if you have six tens in the tens place and each one is worth 10, 
you're going to skip count by tens because this is 10 ones and this and this and this. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Nice job, friends. So is 60 bigger? Is that a greater value? Or is 40 a greater value? Nice job, friends. 60 is a greater value or a bigger number or amount than 40. So that means that 862 is greater than 845. But you can see the way it's written out here, our greater than is going to eat the biggest number. So if it's on this side, we're using that brooked L, 845 is less than 862, which can also be said in the uh, reverse order of that as well, which is what I had just mentioned. 862 is greater than 845. All right, then we look at this number here, which some of you maybe right off the bat are looking at that and say, I can tell those numbers are equal. And equal means just the same. But if you wanna go through that same process, it works for this here as well. We start, first things first, start in the largest place. So we look and we see in the hundreds, seven and seven. Okay, so we gotta go to second step. If the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So then we hop to the next place and two and two, those are the same as well. So again, you hop one more time to the ones place and we see nine and nine. These numbers are the same and have the same value. So we put equal means just the same. So these two numbers and values are the same. And then you come down to this bottom one down here. It says 543, 368. So first things first, start in the largest place. So we started in our hundreds and this here says five. So five hundreds and each one is worth a hundred. So it'd be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And you can see them drawn out here as well. And then we look at the largest place in this three digit number here and there is a three in the hundreds place. So that means 100, 200, 300. So which one has the greater value, 500 or 300? Nice job. And you can even see just by looking. So this is again, kind of going back to that supertizing where I can just look in my brain and I can see that this amount here is larger than this amount here. So you don't even really need to go any farther than that. And you come right to that third step where it says, step three, write your symbol to make the statement true. So then you're choosing one of these symbols, either less than, equal to, or greater than. And since this one is the bigger number and the alligator always munches on that big number, um, it is 543 is greater than 368. All right, nice job, friends. Hopefully this is really starting to kind of stick in your brain and make more sense as we work through this here together. So then I'd like to briefly go over our comparing numbers with base 10 blocks, because we're also gonna build our numbers here together. So we're gonna practice with two to three digit numbers here in just a second. So compare numbers with base 10 blocks. So if we're looking at the number 358 and 247. We can see underneath it is drawn out already for us in our base 10 blocks. Before we get going, I wanna remind my friends, let's go ahead and practice building a 10. So if we had all of our little ones are all on their own, okay? So here we go, we've got all of our 10 or our ones here and I have 10. We know that once you have 10 ones, you can build them together, okay? So we're gonna sing our song, you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten ones makes ten. So we see here our ten ones. Now we're able to choop, scooch together and transform into a ten. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, ten, tens makes one hundred. If we want to know the value of the tens, then we skip count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, one. So we can see all of our tens, which are broken down into a hundred ones, are put together in our hundreds cube here. And then 100 ones is the same value as 10 tens. Let's do it again. Nice job, friends. I just wanted to make sure that we felt super comfortable with understanding our 10 ones come together to make a 10. And once we have 10 of them, they can come together to make 100. All right, so just keeping that in our brain, let's look at these numbers here. We started our largest place, which is a three in the hundreds place, which means that there are three hundreds blocks, which is the value of 100, 200, 300. And you can see them drawn out here. Then we look at our tens place, and there is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Five tens is equal to or the same as 50 right? Because this digit in the tens place has a value of 50. And then we have eight ones here. And then looking at this number, two in the hundreds, four in the tens, and seven in the ones. And so right off the bat, we look at that greatest number, that largest place. 300 is greater than 200. So 358 is greater than 247. And the same thing was done for this one down here. You just don't see the HTO chart right now, but you can see that we're looking at the five here, the largest place, and there are five hundreds here. And on this side, there are six. So right off the bat, we don't need to hop over anymore. We know that 600 is greater than 500. So 587 is less than 672. You guys wanna do our greater gator now, just to help us remember. Okay, two goofy numbers sitting in a tree, teasing greater gator, you can't catch me. Along came greater gator, hungry as can be, and snap, the biggest number right out of the tree. So that always helps us to remember that it is always going to be open mouth eating the biggest number because our greater gator is super hungry and he will always go for the biggest number. Now I'm gonna pop you guys back this way over here so we can see our two charts here that are all these different ways to represent three digit numbers. So we're gonna practice by going through two three digit numbers and then um, we're gonna compare them and see which one is greater than, less than, or equal to. So if you have a piece of paper at home, I encourage you to join and do this along with me or maybe your dry erase sheet or a board that you maybe have at your house from distance learning. So our very first number is 362. Can you guys write it down and hold it up for me? Right, ready to show? Three, two, one. <gasps> nice. If you had a three, then a six, then a two, you nailed it. If not, no worries. You're stretching your brain and you can fix your numbers right now. So we're comparing this number here. And again, that's in standard form when it's just plain old numbers. So it's written at the bottom, 362 in standard form. The number we're comparing is, are you ready? 389. Go ahead and write it out, and we'll see if we came up with the same answer. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. <gasps> nice! If you had a three in the hundreds, an eight, and then a nine, you got it. So I'm gonna put that on this side here. Again, our numbers are in standard form when they are just written out in number form. So now we're gonna pop to this top part here the HTO chart. So we're gonna look at that, those two numbers and break them down into hundreds, tens, and ones. So coming back to our 362, which digit is in the hundreds place? Yep, if you said three, you nailed it. All right, so we've got our three in our hundreds place. What digit is in the tens place in this number? Nice, yeah, you're totally right. The six is in the tens place, which that leaves, if we have the three in the hundreds, the six in the tens, what's in the ones? 
Yeah, you're right. It's the two. It's our last number there. Okay, so let's do the same thing for 389. Which digit is in the hundreds place? Nice job, friends. You're right. The three is in the hundreds. That means what is in the tens place? Nice. If you said eight, then you are absolutely correct. If not, no worries. Go ahead and write an eight in your HTO chart at home. Okay, what now is the only digit that's left? And which one is in the ones place? job friends our nine is in the ones place all right so we've got our hto three is in the hundreds eight is in the tens nine in the ones and three six and two on this side so now on this one here let's go ahead and do our model form so this is where we're going to be building it with base 10 blocks if i have a three here in the hundreds place how many hundreds do i have you can be drawing these out with me at home as well Nice. I think I heard a friend say three. If I've got three in the hundreds place, that means I have three of these hundreds. Let's go ahead and put them on our chart. One, two, there we go, and three. Now, looking at our tens, how many do I have there? I think I heard a friend say six. So if I have six tens, got one, two, three, four. I didn't quite fit them all on this one. So then I had another one that had sorry, let me find here it is. And two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. In my hundreds. And then how many ones? Yep, you got it. Two in the ones place. So we've drawn it out in model form. Now that we can kind of see it better and visualize each of those different places, then we can easily do our expanded form because our expanded form is just the value of this, but written out in numbers. So three in the hundreds is worth how much? Yep, 300. Then six here, six tens, how much is that worth? Remember, as 10 is, uh, has 10 each, 10 ones in each. So if there are six of these, how much would it be worth? You said 60, you nailed it. And remember in expanded form, we use that plus symbol to show that the sum of all of these uh, values together gives us our total value. All right, and then how many ones do I have here, friends? In 362. How many did we see here? Yeah, just two ones. All right. And since we're already over here, let's go ahead and write it out in word form. Okay, I'll give you a second. Three hundred. Let's see if we have the same. Three hundred. Okay, maybe you're feeling really confident with how to write out your numbers in word form, or maybe we're still practicing it together. Either way, that's okay. We'll work on it here together. And the more you do it, the more progress you start to make. And we've got 62, 362. Now let's come to this side here, 389. So how many hundreds do I have? In 389. Nice. I think I heard a friend say three hundreds. I put all, all three of my hundreds up there. Now, how many tens do I have? Yeah, you got it, friends. Eight tens. That's a lot of tens. I had to draw them in two post it notes here. Four and four. So if you're drawing them at home, you should have eight tens, just like I do here. All right, now we're on to the ones. How many ones do I have? Nice, if you said nine, you are absolutely correct. Because we have our three, our eight, and our nine. Our nine is in our ones place, so we have nine little ones here. 
So now that we can see it and visualize it with our model form, let's do our expanded form, the number version of each of these values. So 300 is worth how much? 300, you got it. Then remember we use our plus sign to show the sum of all of these together. All these eight, eight tens, how much is that worth? If you said 80, you got it. If not, no worries. I love that you are here working through this together with me, practicing so hard and stretching your brain. All right, then our nine ones is worth. Yeah, it's just the nine, right? All right, now let's see. Hopefully, because we wrote 300 on the other side, our word form now should be easier for you because we've been practicing it. So, 300. You can really stretch it out and do your best with your spelling. This one is a little bit trickier. Ready? 89. 89. All right, so now it's time for us to compare the two. I built 389 in here, okay? And I had 362 in this side here. Okay, and remember, first things first, start in the largest place. Three and three. Okay, so second step, if the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So we have to go to the next place because they both have 300. I can see six in my tens here and eight in my tens here. And even just looking at them drawn out in model form, I can see which one is the greater number. Amazing friends, our eight is larger than our six. So 362 is less than 389. You guys did incredible today. Thank you for all your hard work. Have a good day. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.